Cam4.com has some of the internet's hottest cam girls broadcasting live from all over the world. Get 20 free tokens to get you started at cam4coupons.com slash podcast. That's cam, the number four, coupons.com slash podcast. Now let's get to the show. Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. Shout out to all the whoreheads out there. This is Billy Presida, and you're listening to the Man Whore Podcast. Hey, 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 everyone. How you doing? Welcome to the show. If you are new, I am your host, comedian Billy Presida. I know a lot of podcasts this week are probably talking about the mass shootings in El Paso, Texas, and Dayton, Ohio. I will not be doing a gun rant this week. Uh, I, I won't get much more political than we are already getting uh, on this week's show. But I do want to say this. If you are feeling mad, if you are feeling disheartened, if you are uh, feeling sad, don't just tweet. Make sure you're voting. And I don't just mean the big sexy one every four years. I mean local politics. I mean statewide elections. Start paying attention to what's going on locally. And if you need some help with that, go to Ballotpedia.org. That's B-A-L-L-O-T-P-E-D-I-A.org. They have an upcoming election dates calendar. So you can uh, find out when the next election is in your neck of the woods because it's not always in November, people. You go here, maybe you go like, oh, snap, I actually do live in South Carolina's 19th district, and I want to vote in that special election for House Rep on August 20th. Or, hey, you care about what your kid's getting taught in school, so you got to vote in that recall election for Middleton, Ohio's 134th school district on August 27th. State laws change with statewide reps, and statewide reps change in statewide elections. And that's how we got this week's guest, State Senator Jessica Ramos, rep in New York State's 13th District, which encompasses several neighborhoods in Queens. And I cannot wait to share with y'all in a bit. But to go on to a uh, happier topic, Manhorcon, you're you're hearing right now my post-Manhorcon voice. Is it lovely? If you're new to the show, I swear I normally sound a lot cuter. Uh, this is just what happens when, when I hang out with, with a bunch of wild fan whores all weekend in New York City. Oh, it was so much fun. Oh, I love meeting y'all in person because then I just like get to learn all your stories and your different backgrounds and your different interests. All of y'all are like an email or an Instagram handle or a Patreon pledge or a download to me in a way. Right, but then I get to meet at Manhorcon some of y'all in the flesh in person and attach a face and a voice and a personality to that handle, that email address. I won't go on and on about what we did, but it was oh, just so much fun because there was a lot of like chit chat and getting to know each other and talking about serious topics. And then there are other times when it's like, well, how many shots can we put in my face? Uh, the I will say the mom's Q and A was was pretty wild because I learned stuff about my parents' divorce that I didn't know before, but I also learned that my dad is not into period sex. So, quite the weekend. And I'm not going to give you the dirty, sexy details of, you know, what my dick did that weekend, okay, because that is only, you know, available to the members of my fan whore community on Patreon. Hey, Sexual Achievement Sunday thread, go read about it. Very grateful, everyone. I, except for the whoever jacked my iPhone charger. If you think you jacked the iPhone charger off the kitchen counter Friday night at the Hooker House, email me and I'll let you. I'll let you buy me a new one because that ain't cheap. Can you believe that? Like I get robbed even at my own weekend. Oh, geez, Billy, man, I didn't even realize it was yours. I would never take it if I knew it was yours, Billy. Oh, I had fun. I am emotionally drained, though. I am 
I'm emotionally drained. I'm physically drained. I'm seminally drained. I am just completely drained in all the ways one is drained after a dope weekend. But I definitely took a couple days to kind of like recharge the batteries. And shout out again to MotorBunny.com, by the way, hooking us up. Uh, the presenting sponsor, uh, use promo code stay slutty for $50 off at motorbunny.com. We like them. They take care of me. Uh, but Hey, maybe you couldn't for whatever reason, you couldn't come out uh, for the weekend. Hey, there's still another chance to feel like you were here. We had these swag bags, these really cool man con duffel bags, Filled with goodies from all of our sponsors at Uber Lube and Clona Willie and Geeky and Kinky Pins and Lilo. I mean, hell, there's a Lilo vibrator in there that retails for $180. It's a sick bag of treats. And I'm going to give one away very soon. See, during ManorCon, one of the events was How Well Do You Know Billy Trivia? So there's going to be a condensed version of that quiz. Sent out to my mailing list this Friday, August 9th. So make sure you are on my mailing list. Go to manwarpod.com, sign up for the email list. And then and then make sure you open the email blast uh, and take that quiz. We're going to say uh, whoever got the mo- scored the most points by the end of next week will win the bag for free, shipping included. Enjoy the bag, enjoy the goodies, enjoy the vibrator from Lilo. Manorpod.com, sign up for the mailing list. Beautiful weekend, so much fun. Who else, honestly, who else gets to say that they watch their fans fuck each other? Like, I know it's not a sex weekend, but like my type of fans, they kind of end up turning it into a sex weekend. So like, that's cool. But I did want to share this one message I got from an attendee. Uh, we're going to call her Jay. And I thought this um, this will give you an idea just what it what it feels like. She wrote, hey, Billy. I hope you're having some nice alone downtime. I'm better at writing than talking, so I just want to say thank you so much for everything. For educating, advocating, teaching me so many things that I never would have known existed. Your open-mindedness and non-judging attitude shines through via your podcast and simply talking to you in person. I'm having my own post-man Horcon cry session, just feeling so grateful to be surrounded by like-minded, kind, open, sex-positive people. Not to be too dramatic, but it's kind of been life-changing, giving me a big perspective change on some things in my life. So thank you times a billion for this weekend and everything you do year-round. It's an honor to have met such a great human. Well, Jay, it was an honor to meet you and to meet everyone who came out, uh, whether for the full weekend or just at the live show at Karma. Uh, yeah, it's you make me a happy whore. I'll say that much. Just to continue the gratitude train, let's do that fan whore appreciation moment. Okay, don't skip ahead. Uh, this is the part of the podcast where I like to give a few shout outs to members of my fan whore community on Patreon. Uh, fun note. The majority of people who attend ManwhoreCon, sure, they don't know each other, know each other, but they do know each other through our sex positive discussion groups and community on Patreon. When you're a member, you get to be part of our secret Facebook group, The Champagne Room. Many people are sharing nudes with each other in the peep show. And others are just there because they want to support the pod. So I like to say thank you right now to Anna. Uh, You know what? You've got five Facebook friends, and I think if you if you had come to Manwork Con, you would have left with a few more. But you know what? I am happy that you are a, a part of our online group. Shout out to Laura M. Hey, let's cuck your hubby together. Yeah, sounds like a plan. I'm excited for it. And shout out to Rich, NYC man, Rich. I'm sorry we didn't get to meet you at Manwork Con. Maybe next year. Maybe at one of my upcoming live shows. And you too can become a member for as little as $2 a month. Head on over to patreon.com slash podcast. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash podcast. And now for this week's guest, State Senator Jessica Ramos. Baby's first politician. Heyo. 
Senator Ramos was uh, part of the blue wave that happened back in the uh, 2018 midterms. Uh, she unseated a Democratic incumbent. She's already been passing legislation in, in up in Albany. And she's the chair of the Labor Committee. And uh, I had the pleasure of driving out the Queens and having a chat with her. She has a bill out in the New York State Legislature up in Albany uh, that, that will hopefully be going to a vote. Uh, the, the Stop Violence in the Sex Trades Act, uh, it, would, it would fully decriminalize sex work in the state of, of New York. I do want to say that in the middle of our conversation, there uh, she does receive a phone call. And I'm going to explain what that phone call is when we get to it. Let's get to me and Senator Jessica Ramos. The Man Whore Podcast is sponsored this week by Cam4.com, a free campsite with thousands of hot models broadcasting live from all over the world. And exclusive for Man Whore Podcast listeners, Cam4 has a special offer. You go to cam4coupons.com slash podcast and create your free account. Then you're going to get 20 free tokens just to get started on the house just for you. You use those tokens to go into these chat rooms. You make all sorts of requests. The tokens help you stand out. Take advantage of this special offer. Go to cam4coupons.com slash podcast. That's cam, C-A-M, the number four coupons.com slash podcast. Create your free account, get your free tokens, and start watching, chatting, and playing with the hottest live models on the internet. And now let's get to the show. Yeah, I've been a state senator for all of seven months. Uh, before that, I was director of community and ethnic media for the city of New York. Mm. I did that for a few years. Um, and before that, my career and really where I thought mo- my vocation was, was in the labor movement and mm. organizing workers, um, which is why uh, talking about sex work, um, which is such a taboo subject for so many people, yeah. Um, was really necessary. And as chair of the labor committee, I felt my job was really to focus on migrant workers altogether. Yeah. I actually didn't even, I, when I saw that you were the chair of the, the labor committee, is labor committee? Yeah. I, I didn't realize, I was like, oh yeah, sex work, like that. Why wouldn't that be, why wouldn't the labor person Correct. be, you know, trying to fight for that? Uh, what, what even got you, I guess, on board with sex work decrim? Like, have you always, thought like, yeah, like in high school, but like they should be allowed to do that. Or was that a thing you had to kind of come to like most of us? I don't know that I I had formed an opinion about what should happen at an early age, but something did happen to me that kind of triggered at least the thought process. Mm. Um, So I've lived, I'm born and raised in the district. I Mm -hmm. have lived here my entire life. I have not- and and in the, in like literally in this corner, mm. I, and I've lived in every neighborhood in the district, um, along Roosevelt Avenue, we have had sex workers at the very least my entire life. I've always seen sex workers. I've always seen them as people. I see them in the morning. I see them in the afternoon. I see them at night. I acknowledge them as my neighbors. Like, hey, that's candy. That's correct. Yeah. I I know I know many of their names. I say good morning. I say good evening. Um, but one particular night, hmm. I was coming back from Manhattan with a few of my girlfriends. I must have been around 19 or 20. It was really hot. It was like a July night or something like that. And we came out of the train station at this, uh, on Roosevelt Avenue and 74th Street. And a police officer stopped us and frisked us because some of us were in shorts. Some of us were in short skirts and he thought we were walking the street. Um, the frisking part was quite extensive. Um, and ever since then, I started, I think, to be more conscientious of their existence and what that means about what level of respect you give a human being. Mm. Because, of course, it's like, well, if he's touching me that way because he thinks I'm a sex worker and that he can just touch me liberally anywhere... I mean, what kind of respect are we showing other human beings, no matter what it is that they do for a living? That seemed to me highly unfair. So, you know, fast forward a decade and a half later, I finally feel like I have an opportunity to speak up for them. And when I first opened this office, um, one of the first, one of the first groups to visit was a group of former sex workers oh, really? and some current ones who came in and they're like, and they laid down 
the law. Mm-hmm. This is why we ended up doing sex work, not necessarily because we want to, some because we want to, um, but we're having violent violence issues with police, with customers, with all sorts of things. How can we make this better? Mm. And that's what really started this conversation in this project. Yeah. When you when you started to to run for state senate, you didn't. That was was that. It was like that meeting that made you go like, oh, I want to make this on my platform. Yeah, I mean, it. it I, I don't think everyone who runs for any office is thinking like, I'm going to protect the sex workers. The I'm hookers protect, need protection. So, like, I don't so, think that's the thing they yeah, think. Yeah, they no, for, for us in this office, unequivocally, we yeah. protect everybody. Even, right. even if we don't necessarily agree with your way of life, that's not the point. Mm-hmm. That's not what I got elected to do. That's not just like not my my ethos, right? Whether you voted for me or not, whether you're able to vote for or not, well, however it is that you identify who you love, what you do during your private time, as long as you're not hurting another person person i don't care yeah um i just want to make sure that you're safe that's my job mm. that's period were there any like learning moments in that in that meeting with those people when you when you first oh, opened for up sure um understanding discrimination mm. uh when it comes to uh employment and housing for transgender people is very very real and remember we have the largest transgender community in the entire country right here in our district mm. um there is, I won't, I won't mention her name, but you know, she, while she was going through her transition from male to female, was working at a very well known ritzy restaurant in Manhattan. And, um, when she notified her supervisor that she would be, um, getting breast implants, um, they fired her. And, um, She still needed to be able to pay for her medication and her hormones and everything that she needs to take care of her health. Mm. Um, So she ended up having to, you know, turn to sex work in order to provide for herself and make ends meet um, because she she got fired. She, of course, felt like nobody was going to hire her. Um, unfortunately, there's still a lot of transphobia, homophobia, um, and and that that leads to, I think, um, an issue that non sex workers often think about it as a quality of life issue. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't I don't want to see sex workers or you know what people say prostitutes. I don't use that word walking the street um, at night, and it's like I get that it's not aesthetic pleasing for you i'm sorry that your eyes are hurt but what that person is going through what whatever the conditions were for that person to end up having to do that work is probably a lot worse than what your eyes are going through right now um and that's that's just the reality of it so for me it's about workforce development for Mm -hmm. me it's making sure that we're vacating their records Mm -hmm. so that they're able to pass background checks um, and, and, and get new jobs if they so choose. Um, and making sure that if they're stopped by police officers, that if a condom is found on their person, that that's not used as evidence as sex work because for fuck's sake, and sorry if yeah. I don't know if we can curse on this podcast, um, but I curse a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, perfect. <laughs> I, uh, I, I mean, safe sex is right. Yeah. And at the end of the day, in talking about sex work, we want to reduce incidences of STDs. We want to reduce uh, the levels of HIV. You, you also know? don't want some like college girl like who's just got condoms in her purse to get stopped by a cop, get in trouble for it, and be like, well, I guess I don't carry condoms now. Now we just got people in general not practicing safer sex. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Right. So that's 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 kind of our our impetus for for uh, p- kind of pulling all of these issues from under the rug where they've been swept into mm-hmm. for such a long time. Look, I mean, you know, this country was always based on a very puritanical, um, you know, value system. Mm-hmm. Um, but as we grow more diverse, I mean, it's just a matter of figuring out how we can get along with each other and not tolerate, but accept each other um, and hopefully help each other thrive. Yeah. When it comes to, you know, these like little tiny laws here and there that just like let the cops harass you know, sex workers are on the street. I, I don't think we m- many people know about. I just got my mom on board with sex work decrim, but she had no fucking idea. Right. I just had to give her like an article and be like, just read this. And then she comes back to me. She's like, oh, they are just, they're just using random laws to stop and harass people. What is this? And I'm like, yeah, I know you're a white lady in North Jersey, but like, here's some information. Yeah. But like the things about like, you know, condoms as, uh, as, a reason to be able to, like, you know, arrest right. you or, you know, the loitering laws. The loitering laws. The loitering law. laws, I had, Nine, that was a revelation. 94% of arrests 
um, for loitering for the pur- purposes of prostitution are black women, mm. which presumably also include black transgender women, mm. right? We, we don't really, we aren't able to differentiate um, uh, with that data set. Um, is the NYPD not like uh, they don't differentiate when they make the arrest? Or? Well, the thing is that that just because you're you're at, I have heard stories of people in my district getting arrested for loitering for the uh, purpose of prostitution while waiting for the bus, mm-hmm. while going to the store to buy cigarettes, while buying a gallon of milk at your local supermarket, mm-hmm. while waiting for a friend to come pick them up. I mean. It's it's just a level of harassment and quite frankly racism many times that is inhumane, completely inhumane. Yeah, because when you go ninety four percent, it's like well, where where are all the white the white ladies getting arrested for this? Where no? Wh- where are all the madams went, from the Upper East Side? I went to NYU. A lot of short skirts when we when we were going out. Sure. And uh, and none of us ever kind of you know. Got huh. messed around, be like, "Hey, you selling?" That was never that. Right. Um. That's that's certainly not fair. And so part of, was part of legislation you've been putting in. Uh. That's go- is it going to a vote? The 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 lo- in, uh, repealing the loitering law. So last session we were mm-hmm. able to get it out of committee. It mm-hmm. had to be a- approved through the codes committee. And if you don't know what a committee is, go watch the you know I'm just a bill video. Everybody, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, so the state Senate, like every legislative body just about anywhere, is divided into different uh, issue groups. And in this case, uh, for this particular bill, it would it had to go through the codes committee, which is in charge of changing the penal codes and, and you know, all of the different law books, um, updating them to keep up with, with our society and with the century. Um, and so... <laughs> with the century. It's, Dude, it's so true on so many different levels. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. look at, I mean, I'm a comic. The, all the obscenity laws that ever get us in trouble are yeah. outdated stuff from like, you know, early 20th oh, yeah. century. We're going to be talking about free speech a lot more next session. Oh, so stay I tuned. would love. Actually, I, I, I was actually with the brand, uh, the person in charge, the brand marketing person at Babeland Toys. Uh-huh. And I was like, if I, if you got to sit down with someone from the, the New York State um, or, or city council, either one, what would you want to add? What would you want taken care of? And she was like, she had, uh, so Babeland, like the, the Soho store. I don't know if you've ever been to a Babeland, but like down uh, on Mercer in, in Soho, they have a, they have one of their locations. And across the street, there used to be some sort of like clothing store that had like these signs that said like, get your shit together and using like profanity, like fuck and everything. No asterisks in the words or anything like that, right. which I certainly don't mind. Right. But they're allowed to have that type of signage right in the storefront. Yeah. Across the street, the sex toy shop can't even say the word sex toys. Because of whatever the 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 law is, yeah. For the, that. the concern, or at least the concern, or, or the excuse, in many ways, is usually children. Yeah, but which, like, which to me yeah. is astounding. So I am a mom. Mm-hmm. I'm a single mom. I have a six year old, and I have an eight year old, and. I mean, obviously, everybody has the right to parent their children however they wish. Mm-hmm. My personal opinion, which I not you know I don't try to impose on anybody else, is I don't hide anything from my boys. I explain it. I explain that there's a time and place. Um, and actually, a very good example about this is my my oldest son, Benjamin, huge NYCFC fan. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I take him to a soccer game. I step foot in Yankee Stadium, even though it gave me the chills. Sorry, huge Mets fan. I'm, I'm, the, Met, I'm the Mets state senator, right? <laughs> but, I'll go, but I'll go for a soccer game, right? <laughs> So, so we're there and they're chanting, come on, city boys, make some fucking noise. We're going wild, 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 right? So I'm like, look at Benjamin and Benjamin is singing along. So just to be facetious, I make a face. I'm like, oh, you know, and he's like, oh my God, mom, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, honey, time and place. This is fine. I never want to hear that word at home. I never want to hear that word that you're saying it at school with your friends. It's not okay until you're a certain age. Completely understood. Soccer game language. Habit, having a conversation, <laughs> right? And it's the same way about, you know, teaching your kids to call their generals the right yeah. word, right? Not, not hiding those things. This is, this is actually, you know, going back to the whole abstinence thing. This is why, why, why that way of teaching sex just doesn't work. Hmm. I mean, it's proven not to work. You want people to understand why, why you should decide to have sex, why things should be special or not, you know, how to take care of yourself. All of the myriad of ways that you know you can you can address your contra contraceptive needs no matter what gender you are um 
I mean, we're living in, living in a different time. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely come back to comprehensive sex ed because it's a, it's a topic near and dear to my heart because I got none. But, um, back on New the, Jersey, huh? uh, well, I went to boarding school. I went to like an alternative boarding school in Connecticut. Ah. And the only, the only sex that I got was the statutory rape laws of Connecticut. And they'd be like, seniors, a toe counts. Don't do it. Uh, and every year someone got in trouble for that. Uh, yeah. it's, but, but yeah, uh, when back with the, with the sex work decrim, you have this, uh, legislation, the Stop Violence in the Sex Trades Act doesn't, doesn't become an acronym as nicely as SESTA FOSTA, no. sadly. Why do the hateful people have such good acronyms? They're so good at it. Well, this <laughs> is what the GOP is the master at, right? I don't, I don't know if you know who Frank Luntz is, but he is the mastermind behind, you know, the Patriot Act. Mm-hmm. The, uh, you know, uh, no child left behind mm-hmm. and all of these, you know, great sounding, terrible things. We really need better branding as we Democrats. We need better branding. <laughs> this is true. This is so true. We're cooler. Mm-hmm. We're smarter. We're much more caring. I mean, for fuck's sake, like we, yeah. you know, we can, we can figure it out. Um, and I think that now that like leadership is starting to change and we're going through a generational shift in political leadership, mm-hmm. I think we'll see it. Well, so when you like when you came out like for sex work decrim, like did other politicians go like, you you can't do that. That's we don't we don't do that. Not know? that I can't do. Not that I. They didn't tell me, Jessica, you can't do that. Yeah. But they did. Some of them would be like, oh, I I don't know if I can be with you on sure. this. I, I have to do my research. I, I need to learn more. Can you tell me more mm-hmm. about it? Uh, I have a, I have a district with lots of yeah. church going people. Sure. I, you know, and it's like, well, that's the thing. It's about having that conversation. Look, our opponents, um, with decrim, people who are largely, um, campaigning for what they call end demand or the mm-hmm. Nordic model, um, Otherwise, some people call that legalizing sex work as opposed to decriminalizing, right? So that's something completely different. Okay. There, those are three. There's decriminal. There's criminalization, which is what we're under right now. Mm-hmm. There is decriminalization. There's legalization. Legalization, and then there's the Nordic, Nordic model. model. Um, the problem with end demand or the Nordic model, aka, is that you are punishing the person who is buying sex. Right. And I believe that there's something to say about an interaction between two consenting adults. Mm -hmm. And no, I don't believe that sex is violence. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that as long as it was consensual and as long as you're therefore empowering the person to report violence against their person, then it should be okay. Mm -hmm. You don't like it, don't do it. It's like being gay. It's like having an abortion. It's like whatever. You know, you, you, as long as you're not hurting anybody else, I believe that, you know, it should be regulated in a way that ensures that every party is safe. Um, it's also like economics wise weird. Cause like if, if it was legal to sell, if it's fine to sell TVs, but it's illegal to buy a TV, how many of us would actually go into a Best right. Buy? Like we'd all just like go around the back, be like, yo, I just need a flat screen, please. Um, oh, dude, it's like, the, it, just to digress for a second, it's like the e bikes. Mm-hmm. Le- legal to sell e bikes, legal to buy e bikes, not legal to ride e bikes. Why would you sell and buy an e bike if yeah. you can't ride it? Boggles my mind, but I got it mm-hmm. legalized these, these, this, uh, this C- past session. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, but the thing with, uh, going back to, to the decrim is that they're saying that we are protecting both what they call the pimp, which I think is a racist word, and the John. First of all, there's also Janes, A. B, um, we're not changing the penal code Mm. when it comes to the trafficker. Mm. The trafficker will still always be at fault for exploiting, you know, the, the people that they're holding against their will. What the entire, the overarching, um, point and mission of all of this is actually to end human trafficking Mm -hmm. the problem is that the way the penal system in new york works we can't differentiate between those who want to do it and those who are being forced to do it so if we are able to tell between those two then we'll actually be able to get to those traffickers much more quickly and mind you the vice squad in the nypd which i believe should be defunded Mm -hmm has played an integral role in keeping up 
the trafficking ring on Roosevelt Avenue specifically. This was uncovered by the New York Times back in September mm. of, of just of 2018, just this past September. I mean, they've been com- completely complicit with traffickers. How is it that we can trust them to, quote unquote, end human trafficking? It's unfair. It's corruption. It's violence. And I just, they, if they can't do their job, we should be utilizing those resources Mm -hmm. to, you know, rehab people, to provide job opportunities for people, to do different things. Yeah. And it's awesome that like legislation is being proposed and that you're saying that leadership's changing, that we can get these things out of committee and, and maybe get some things actually passed, like maybe, you know, taking out this, the the loitering statue and stuff like that. But ultimately with something like something as big as, cause the, your, your, not as branding friendly, uh, bill title. <laughs> um, is, it seems comprehensive, has a lot of the criminal record relief and it repeals a lot of the penalties and one. It's, it's full decrim. But how do you get other politicians on board? You have to be willing to have those difficult conversations. How do you convince someone though, like someone from an upstate county being like, no, cause he or she thinks, like, they don't think they have sex workers in their constituency, and they totally do. Like, how do you convince them, like, this helps your people, too? I have found that if my approach is to be persuasive, I'm not as effective as as if I'm much more willing to listen and mm-hmm. have a conversation. Because the fact is that most people never talk about this stuff. Mm-hmm. So they've believed myths. They're misinformed or I've also found the opposite. They've been dying to like talk about this oh. <laughs> and like have never found who to do it with and in, in a way that's productive. And you've put the flag up. You're like you right. can talk to me. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point. Julia has done the same thing. She's like, talk to us. Happy to do it in private. Happy to do it in public. I'll come to your church and sit down. I'll take the backlash for you. Mm-hmm. But the whole entire point is that there's a huge public education component to this that we we're not we're not going to be able to pass this bill tomorrow but we all what we want to do is by the time we're able to pass it we passed it because people understand why it's so important mm-hmm. not because we shoved them down their shoved it down their throats you and, know? If, and if they get some human element to it i think they start to understand i think when we think sex worker we're thinking people who are doing client work people who are doing like rum and tugs people who are doing full service but Sex worker includes like people who do porn, people who webcam, people who like take sexy pictures of their feet. And there are, I mean, I, since I have a, you know, in theory, like if you, like if you do foot, you know, foot fetish parties, that's a form of sex work. It's a, it's a legal form, you know? Yeah. If, if, if you just like, you know, let a guy pay to like rub your feet for a half hour, that's for him, that is very sexual. So that is sex work. It's just, you can't get arrested for it. And I know a lot of very upper class, Chicks who I, I went to college with, whose parents have no idea that they webcam on the weekends. Right. And they make money that way. And if I think if more people saw these things as sex work as well, and that their daughters do it too, maybe they'd be a little, I mean, they'd be, there'd be a shock to the system, but they might be like, well, my daughter's like not a drug addled, whatever, whore or something. So maybe they're not all that too. And even if they are, maybe they should just not get, you know, harassed yeah. by the cops. Look, the whole economic model specifically for our generation is completely ass backwards. Mm-hmm. Home ownership for our generation is completely down from where it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not getting married as frequently unless it is to consolidate apartments. That mm-hmm. is now probably one of the number one Super reasons popular. why people, well, why people are, are, you know, um, you know, getting ready for cuffing season, because it I guess. makes sense, um, not because like they're, you know, right. Not because they want to start Jesus a family. And, yeah. Um, and so, and so, you know, student loan debt and all of these other things and, you know, having degrees, but not really being able to pursue a career, mm. you know, after you worked so hard and owe so much money has really made our economic outlook quite messy. Yeah. Quite messy, um, and and that's something that scares me. And 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 some a huge reason, you know, it's funny. People people worry about sex work and what are other people going to think? And like, is this ethical? Is this moral? I don't think government's job is to decide what is moral. Mm-hmm. I think government's job is to protect the public welfare and uh, so, so yeah, and 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 just society in general. Um, but ultimately, for me, I'm worried. <laughs> about are sex workers going to have pensions? Mm-hmm. How are they going to access health care? 
mm-hmm. even though I'm, I'm the co-prime sponsor for the New York Health Act, mm-hmm. um, and we're trying to figure that out. So obviously that would cover everybody, everybody. I no mean, you're, you're even thinking about the car wash people, which I, yes. I thought was, I was like, I didn't think about those guys, but now I am because I read the newsletter. Those guys <laughs> are exploited. Yeah. Like you, I mean, think about it. They're in the hot sun all day. They're if it's snowing, if it's raining, yeah. if they it's get hail, paid like waitresses. They, like they servers get do, it's right? tipped. Yeah. It, it's tipped work. Mm-hmm. We know that they don't get tipped that much. Mm-hmm. It's not the same as being a restaurant worker. And many times when they put the tips in those boxes, it's not actually div- divvied up equally if they're divvied up yeah, at sure. all. Yeah. Um, and of course, many of them are undocumented, so owners take advantage of them, and no more. How how far do you want to take? So obviously, like your your bill would decriminalize sex work, but like how far are you willing to fight f- with this? Like, I mean, you say you're willing to meet with people and and see where, like, meet them where they're at and see what you can do to get pe- you know get more um, legislators on board. But like, would you go for as far as say decarcerate like people who are locked up for current sex work crimes? Yes. No. So that's very much part of this conversation. It's not about decriminalizing in the future, much in the same way um, that we're talking about legalizing marijuana yeah. and, and you know, expunging records and, you know, making sure that we are decarcerated. Yes, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. We more than that want to destigmatize as well. Um, that's why we're having these conversations that can be quite controversial and, 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 you know, difficult, especially with, with our seniors. But, um, nevertheless, uh, you know, we, when we think about, you know, the, the pers- prison industrial complex mm-hmm. and how it is that we can pick apart those who don't really belong there. Yeah. I mean, there are people who belong in jail, yeah. right? You're a murderer. You belong in jail, right? Um, but for something that shouldn't be a crime, right? Um, it's a shock that the marijuana people, like the, all the pro-marijuana people aren't also on, like trying to, like that they're not on board with this too. Like is like they, sh- there's no reason they should not be like, we want, you know, decriminalize marijuana. You should decriminalize sex work for the exact same reasons. Like it's not your job to tell me what I should be doing. Here. And I wouldn't be surprised if once marijuana is legalized, they do make that shift. Mm-hmm. I think they're, that campaign started first, right? Sure. It's been going on for a very long time. And we're really just as a legislature stuck in the minute details because what we're doing is creating a new industry. Mm-hmm. So we need to make sure that, you know, not only big corporations like MedMen are taking advantage of, you know, dispensaries that should be owned by the very same people who have been selling in the first place. Mm. They have a customer base already. They know the product. They know how to run a business. Why not help them have an entryway and, you know, make sure that they're able to provide for their families in a righteous way, mm. you know? Um, so that's that's kind of where the conversation's been. For sure. So we, we mentioned earlier, you know, uh, sex education in the state of New York. And I, I don't know if uh, if you're familiar with some of these things, but I was kind of shocked myself that New York doesn't require sex ed to be medically accurate, doesn't require you teach contraception or inclusion of LGBTQ people. or And I don't, and I might be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure I read correctly that there technically it's, sex ed isn't even mandated in the state of New York. Now, New York City being an exception, we've got pretty, like, better sex ed than the, the state at large. Isn't it amazing? Like, if you think about science right. and how critical science is, we're going through climate change. It's a fact, not a hoax, right? How could you teach science and not teach a kid about his or her own body mm-hmm. and how it works and what it likes and what it doesn't like and how to take care of it and, you know what what to expect on your first trip yeah. to the gynecologist or the urologist what to you know what i mean like was that was that a thing that you were shocked by when you were when you went to your first gyno appointment like did you know what to expect no my did, no my mom I'm, had the uh, yeah no i'm very liberal i i'm, yeah. I'm the daughter of very liberal parents yeah. i knew since i think i was around four years old that I, around 10 between the age of 10 and 13 i was going to get my period gotcha. i already knew um and my mom had taught me what to do and had told me actually oh my god i've never thought about this before this is good billy i remember my mom in junior high school telling me hey you might be getting your period if it happens here's what you do and then her telling me you know it might happen to your friends too and they may not know what to do so make sure that you know you're you're talking to your friends you become the friend or it's like oh you got your 
Jessica and it was knows. true. Yeah. And it was true for, I think, at least two girls that I could think of, I gave them their first maxi pads. Yeah. I, you know, I would much rather be, you know, your shoulder to lean on or mm. your, your the ears that you need um, and make sure that, you know, we're finding whatever it is, whatever resources, you know, are helpful to you. Mm. I mean, when I was 16, two of my best friends ended up pregnant. Hmm. Um, you know, t- teenage pregnancies were much more common back then. Um, and I saw how, well, some of their hopes and dreams, not all, because thankfully they're both very successful women today. Um, nevertheless, were put on hold for a while. Um, and, you know, op- abortion wasn't an option. They, they didn't want to do that. I actually don't remember exactly what each of their situations were, but they didn't know about contraceptive methods as Um, much. And that to me should be mandatory in schools, not optional, you know? Um, and I, I'm very thankful to be a New Yorker. I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking cocky ass New Yorker. I really (laughs) am. Um, in New York city, they are much more um, willing to explain the intricacies of your genitalia and what happens when you're having sex and, you know, um, yeah, how, how the sperm and the egg interact, the whole nine. Mm. Um, but that's because New York City is New York City. And, of course, same thing Not with being inclusive of LGBTQ yeah. people. Right. Yeah. Not the same as Genesee County upstate, right? Or, or Thousand Islands or whatever. That is something that really, really needs to change because it's a public health issue. And so you're co-sponsoring a bill, and there's actually several bills that are like pending in in the New York legislature, and yours looks like it's the most comprehensive, but also doesn't mention the stress on abstinence that I feel like a lot of places are trying to do where they go like, fine, we'll give you some sex ed, but just make sure you push the don't fuck thing Listen, and your your bill that, or the bill that you're co-sponsoring doesn't have that type of language i saw in the no. other bills at all it was actually very succinct it was just like it was like very common sense tell like, the kids everything yeah like <laughs> so, what, like but like comprehensive like up to date medically accurate and have like the you know yeah. the the doe or whatever it's called um figured out yeah i mean look what are you gonna do you your kids are not going to live under a rock forever. Yeah. And if they're not going to hear the controversial stuff from you as a parent, they're going to hear it from the friend who may or may not be a good influence and now it's a crapshoot. So what are you right. going to do? Yeah. That has never made any sense well, to me. They're going to try to watch porn and and, and Nina Harley uh, likes to say a lot who's a, a sex educator who goes like, you know, you don't we don't teach we teach driver's ed because we don't tell you to watch Fast and the Furious and learn how to drive a car that way. You know, yeah, we yeah. don't want you watching porn and think, oh, well, that's what sex is like. No, that's Fast and the Furious. For me, also, this is very important when it comes to the separation between church and state. Mm-hmm. Okay? I understand that morally you you may believe that you shouldn't have sex until you're married. That's perfectly fine. You have every right for that to be your, your value, your principle, your belief. And, you know, it probably, that's what church is for. Mm-hmm. By all means, you know, whether it's an ethical society, a Buddhist temple, a Christian church, whatever it is, right? But government needs to be based on fact and on data. Mm -hmm. And so now we're talking about science. And scientifically, this is what works for everybody. And public schools got to teach it. What about parochial schools? Do you think they should get their leeway to, like, when we're dealing with children, do you think parochial schools I, should have the same way as church? Or? I mean, by, by definition, parochial yeah. schools are teaching to their religious acumen. Sure. And yes, I mean, I, I believe yeah. that there there should be space for parents who don't want, you know, that option yeah. for their children. Do I agree with it? No. no but, but that's their choice. Sure. I just wonder, like, where the public health issue, like, I guess where that line is. And it's a blurry line because, like, you know, government doesn't get to say over parochial schools. But also, like, is it a public health issue if we are raising generations of kids who don't know about condoms and contraception and STIs or about, you know, LGBT, you know, Which issues is or existence? Was it, wasn't there, like, a... Um what was that show? Sa- wasn't there a Save by the Bell episode where even like right, Jesse Spano is putting, uh, is putting, <laughs> oh, my, oh gosh, am I that much older than you? Jesus, I'm, I'm only 30, 30, I'm 34. Know. Yeah, I read that. Um, I, where, where, I mean, Save by the Bell, for, for those listening who might be at my age or older, I mean, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, there was an episode where Jesse Spano tried to put a condom on the banana. And we're talking about what, like the late aughts? 
late, mm. I'm sorry, late so 90s, late, late early 90s, aughts. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is something that has kind of like slowly been, been happening. Um, but you know, like everything else, a law needs to get passed mm-hmm. in order for it to be done. When, when, whether it's sex ed or, or sex work decrim or other, we'll call them uncomfortable topics, you know, like, what what are the conversations with other lawmakers like when you're trying to get them on board and they're willing to at least meet and they're not getting it? Like, what's what's that like? Is it frustrating because you're like, it's science. It's I don't like what what's, what yeah, are those interactions like. It's just it's it's honestly very comparable to when people tell you that climate change is not real. It's like, excuse me, this isn't about what you believe. Yeah, this is fact. Whether you believe it or not, this isn't about your opinion. This is a problem that we have that needs to be addressed. Sure, but as opposed so, to those people on yeah. the like, you know, I run into like at a casino who believe that, like, you know, you're dealing, you're interacting with the people who actually get to make the laws for it. So it's like changing their minds actually important. Like, I don't have to change my uncle's mind, but like when you're meeting with other lawmakers, like, yeah, it, it's it's, it's your job. Too. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's your job. Um, I don't know. I try, I guess, to be as transparent as possible, as open as possible, mm. um, open about talking about it, but open about like listening to other people's opinions and trying to be as respectful as possible. And I've had people scream at me, sure. you know, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to meet them there. I try to bring them down sure. to, you know, and, but this is all, you know, uh, sort of, I guess, conflict resolution skills, um, which I've done a fair job of, of, Learning in labor over the is years. definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Contract negotiations, all of those things are very comparable. Um, and, and it's really important for me to understand where people are. Um, I, uh, have always thought a very, uh, felt a very specific way about the sense of a revolution. Are revolutions needed? Yes. But oftentimes, and obviously this is relative to whatever the issue is, people need a lot more hand-holding than you think. Mm -hmm. People don't understand an issue. People don't have the information. People are apathetic, don't care about Mm -hmm. what you're talking about. But nevertheless, if it needs to get done, you have to be willing to do the work. That's why you have to be an organizer and be a darn good one because you have to have the patience to to actually do what needs to get done. Um, This is going to be a long battle. Decriminalizing sex work? Are you kidding me? the oldest profession we've never been able to deter people away from it in over 2000 years mm. over 2019 years and you know presumably i mean we're trying to get correct this historical wrong as soon as possible um but there's a whole host of new yorkers to convince um and we want to do it the right way we don't want to do a, that's that's also part of the conversation we don't want to mm. do a half ass job people Sex workers, because they're people like just like us, don't deserve a, a, a bill that isn't really going to respect them and ensure that they have um, a positive outlook mm-hmm. um, in their life. So um, I don't know. I, I guess if you if you operate from from a core value of respecting other people's humanity, whether you agree with them or not, mm. you know, and, and for those at home who might be, you know, Christians and all that jazz, I mean it's all about love thy neighbor. Isn't that what, what we're told? Isn't that isn't well, that the crux love, of everything? Love thy neighbors that also kinda look like you and believe exactly the thing you do, then like maybe you can love them. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's not how that works. You don't get to choose the neighbor you love. That's not how that works. Yeah. You know? I mean, I might, again, I might not agree. There's a reason I'm not a sex worker, yeah. right? I'm not interested. I don't want to. It's not for me. Sure. But the fact that she's doing it or he's doing it is not something for me to judge. Mm-hmm. I'm not God. Yeah. What? And do you find you ha- get different types of pushback from other lawmakers versus when you're talking to like constituents or everyday people? Yeah. I mean, I think from legislators, it's much more about understanding the issue, Mm -hmm. the talking points, the technicalities between the different models. It's much more informational um, because we're we're much more used to um, debating and litigating and, you know, pulling apart an issue until until we figure out a compromise. Right. That's the nature of our work. But for constituents, you know, it's oftentimes about their own feelings and how they feel and their concerns and them not feeling safe. I, so I mentioned Roosevelt Avenue is the main thoroughfare mm-hmm. for sex workers here in the district. I, I live right off of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I cannot tell you, I've never had an experience where any sex workers have made my children uncomfortable. They're very friendly people. Uh. <laughs> I mean, they just don't bother yeah. us. No, they don't, yeah. they don't say right. anything. Okay. They're just there like a person, yeah. you know? Um, and but, so the whole talk, the talking points are all, I'm not, you know, I don't feel safe. It's so dingy, red light districts. And it's like, but no, but he's actually bothering you. And do your boys know? I mean, obviously, like they're very young, but like, do they kind of know what those? People no, are, they haven't no, asked, and I haven't pointed it out sure. yet. Um, I mean, granted, we're Latino, and mm. we're very much used to seeing women in very little clothing. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, no, it, it hasn't been a conversation. But I feel confident that they feel comfortable enough to bring it up if they need to. Okay. Okay. Where can New York State improve on their LGBTQ rights? Well, we we did a slew of things this past session, right? So we passed gender. We banned. Which is? Um, so it's to make sure that people can't be discriminated against at mm-hmm. the workplace. Um, we passed. Um, we we passed a bill to ban conversion therapy Fantastic. because. You know, it's torture. <laughs> it's torture. I mean, it's essentially lobotomies from like the fifties. It's just like not even scientifically accurate. Mm-hmm. It does not work. It's 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 bullshit. Sure. I mean, you know, um, uh, the what we need to work on is to ban the gay uh, and trans panic defense. You know, this idea that when when a crime is committed, mm-hmm. you, you know, you felt unsafe because the person is trans, and so that's an excuse for you to violently come at them. No, yeah. it's not. Violence is never okay, no matter who mm-hmm. you think the other person is. You know, obviously, unless it's self defense or something like that. And so. We still have it on the books that, like, if you're getting hit on or if you're maybe getting intimate with, let's say, like, a trans woman and then you maybe reach down and realize something, you you can be violent yeah, yeah, against them? Yeah, yeah. That's been used many, many times historically. Um, there is a conversation that needs to be had around rape mm-hmm. and um, sodomy um, and... Uh, it's just, you know, we're opening Pandora's box, literally, in many ways. Um, you know, we... It's really disheartening <laughs> to be in a position of power where you can create change and realize that there are so many untapped categories. And this being one of the main big ones, right? It's it's something that everybody engages in, but nobody wants to talk about, mm-hmm. right? And there shouldn't be a sh- there shouldn't be shame related to sex. You know, you should be able to be as as uh, as uh, you know open uh. <laughs> as as open as you want or as closed as you want. But the point is that you should be able to be safe. What if that's the call? It's like we won. <laughs> I it might be. It could be. It could be. <laughs> you want to check? Yeah, I do. Check. Okay, thanks. Hey, Tiff. Okay, so Senator Ramos got a phone call from Tiffany Caban. Tiffany Caban was running for District Attorney of Queens, and it was a very big deal. It turns out that she lost the recount by, she was, they were about to announce she lost the recount by 60 fo- votes. 60. 6 zero. Technically, as of right now, as I, as I record this, um, she's doing some legal fighting over certain particular ballots, but it's not looking great. And Senator Ramos looked distraught getting this news. And I asked to pick up the mic because I wanted to, just, like, you, you know, you, you seem very disheartened. You go, like, we did nothing, but, like, you're doing so much. Because, like, people I mean, are excited now. Look, and people are paying attention not just to the big one every four years, but they're paying attention to the local races in a way they didn't before. The interesting thing about the district attorney position is that their job is to enforce the laws that are written by the state legislature. Mm-hmm. So if the state legislature starts to pass very progressive laws... You force you, maybe you, conservative DAs you, to have to follow You better be it. sure that the district attorney needs to be doing his or her job enforcing those laws. So I think I think that in you know in a sense it's more of a an impetus to keep working and think bigger and bolder and kind of just fuck it up, right? Um but um but at the same time 
what we can't control per se entirely is how the court is managed, right. who enters, who exits, who leaves with whom. And I'm talking about largely immigration stuff um, that affects us directly here in, in our district because we have a, such a high, um, big number of uh, undocumented people uh, as our neighbors. So, I mean... There's a lot of there's a lot of plotting and scheming to do. What's bold? To, what, what's what's big and bold to you? Past, fo- I mean, so, talk, talk, is, I was about that's say, bold. Talk about, talk about decrim is bold. <laughs> what's um, bolder? What's bolder than decrim? I don't know. What, well, I it's don't, hard for me to think of it as bold because I think of it as like makes sense. <laughs> right, right. I mean, so to me, bold means actually thinking through solutions to the problems that we have that aren't necessarily very popular, like decrim, um, but also having a willingness to do the work to change things. We did. We just passed the farm workers' rights bill. I don't know if you know what that is. Uh, I don't know a lot because I don't get on the farm often. Sure, 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 sure. So very briefly, sure. okay? Last Jim Crow era law on the books in New York, okay? Farm, farm workers didn't have the right to have a day off, to be paid overtime, to access unemployment benefits, uh, to form a union if they so choose, right? In short, for the past 80 years, they were excluded from the constitution of the state of New York because at the time, most farm workers were black, Right. Sharecroppers. And they did not, you know, they weren't given the same rights as 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 white people. Present day. Most of them are Latino, mostly Mexican and Guatemalan, still a lot of Jamaicans and Haitians. Mm -hmm. Um, But the point is that there was a bill to give these farm workers those rights in the state Senate for 20 years. I was the eighth state senator to carry the bill. And the governor signed it last week. And yes, this is why elections matter. Having a Democratic majority makes all the difference, right? But it's also about understanding when the time has come for an idea, I think, um, and engaging the public discourse um, and understanding that, quite frankly, in all of the crazy, racist crap that the current president spews had hillary clinton won had would we be enjoying this political climate i don't know i don't know if hillary would have won if people would have started paying attention to the turncoat democrats that were voting for the republican majority in the state senate Mm -hmm. which is one of the people who i unseated yeah right i mean sometimes it takes tragedy for people to get quote unquote woke Mm-hmm. Right. And so I think right now, you know, obviously with Tiffany's campaign for district attorney, we were able to open up a lot of eyes to the prison industrial complex, to the role that the courts play in that, what transformational justice can actually look like in practice, what should be criminalized and what shouldn't be. Right. Those that that talk about being bold, right, challenging what we've always just taken as fact. Mm-hmm. Like this is how it is. No, nah, man. It doesn't have to be that way. We can actually rewrite the entire fucking thing. It's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. Um, and uh, to me, this is what the forefathers were talking about in, in calling this the greatest experiment. We get to reinvent ourselves. And you're clearly very passionate. I can tell us a lot. I mean, before we pick back up, you know, you were showing some emotion about just like the state of things and I can tell you care and, and I'll, and I'll share, and I shared you the, a, a, a piece of that scene when we were walking in, um, from next door, but I went to that rally and that decrim and why rally in February. And I was all like, I don't, I don't know if they're my, it was my friend, Caitlin Bailey, who's a former sex worker. She's been on the show. She's a comedian and she invited me out and we're, and we're watching. And then you, you all came up to speak and I was like, they're sitting politicians. Like they're in right now. They're not like retired and passed. They're yeah. now. Yeah. Wow. And that honestly yeah. made me feel hopeful that because like I just like I get you know it's very easy right now in this time to just get bogged down and be like there are rules and no one cares about the rules and they're not going to follow them and there's yeah. nothing I can do about it but then we see someone like you go out and do something bold and it's like it's hopeful or like when she shared with me um, that aside from the Man Act there aren't really any 
uh, federal statutes against consensual sex work, non-sex trafficking sex work. And that's something that actually can happen state by state. And then to see that the state I'm in is going to is actually trying to make it happen now. Like that, that inspires hope in me. Because, oh, if they're going to do this with sex workers, who knows what else they're going to do. So I do hope you keep doing what you're doing. And I'm Thank excited you. that you're in it um, and that you're speaking out. And I hope you can convert some of the old fogies upstate to get on to get on board. You'll be, you'd be surprised. Those upstate folks aren't so bad yeah. and not so much, not so different from us. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you know, sort of it's like nature versus nurture. And they grew up in a different environment, um, a much more homogenous society. Um, but people, people are smarter than we give them credit for. Thank you so much for chatting with Thanks me. Thanks for having um, me. Where can people, um, where can people follow you? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, on in- I'm on Instagram. <laughs> uh, I'm on Twitter. Um, and I'm on Facebook. Um, and people can email me at Ramos, R-A-M-O-S at, uh, nysenate.gov. Um, yeah, we're, we're pretty accessible. All right. Thanks so much. Why don't you say goodbye to everybody? Yeah, for sure. No, thank you so much for having me. This was great. You know, to to quote President Barack Obama, don't boo, vote. My deepest appreciations to the senator uh, for making time to talk with me about sex work decrim. So let me know what you thought about this week's episode. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Search Billy Presida. I pop right up, you know, you'll, it's, you'll know which one it is, okay? If you see an old guy in a suit, that's my dad. Search Billy's Proceed at Twitter and Instagram. Let me know what you thought about this week's show, or you can comment on the Man Whore Podcast Facebook page. Want to send me an email with your comments, your questions, your titties? You can send that over to manwhorepod at gmail.com. Snag yourself some man whore merch. I have not told you, I have not been pimping the merch too much recently, but we've got some new things. We've got new buttons. We've got new stickers. We have the man whore con duffel bags. Go to gumroad.com slash man whore podcast and get some fun goodies for yourself today. And if you want to join our sex positive discussion groups, the champagne room, the peep show, you want to connect with like-minded listeners from all over the world Become a member of our Patreon community at patreon.com slash podcast. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash podcast. I love you all so much, manwhorecom people. You're the best. Uh, all the hugs in the world. Stay inspired. Stay hopeful. Stay vigilant. And stay slutty.